All right, now you did it all, right? You did that shit. You did a beta blocker as ordered, or calcium channel blocker as ordered, or maybe the nurse practitioner ordered digoxin. You did that shit. You controlled the rate. Remember that maintenance is going to include 2A drugs. Which 2A drugs? Anticoagulants, because we said the ultimate complication was a stroke. And amiodarone is a very common combination. And sometimes we throw that dig on top of that, right? Now, we've talked about these drugs in former little videos on this site. But just so you know, anticoagulants such as warfarin, you don't, this is one of the few times you can do warfarin without doing heparin first and doing that bridge therapy. Your NOAX, new oral anti coagulant medications like your rivaroxaban which is Xeralto or your apixaban which is your Eliquis or your dabigatran which is Pradaxa a tran or a ban will ban a clot remember that from a couple weeks ago those new medications do not require weekly monitoring or any kind of blood monitoring for INR and PT they just don't they don't require any dietary guidelines at all. You can just do your thing, okay? Now, so that's your anticoagulants. The only other thing I wanna say about warfarin, because it's huge, is it's category X, it will kill a baby, okay? So you don't wanna do that shit. Now, amiodarone is an actual cardio version in a medication. So it's going to prevent the dysrhythmia and control this patient's uh, abnormality while the anticoagulants prevent clots from forming in the left atria and causing a stroke okay so you got to kind of need both and then of course you need to control the rate so one of these will work now come with me if you did the beta blocker or calcium channel blocker or digoxin as ordered by the nurse practitioner and your patient's still unstable symptomatic dizzy, low blood pressure, sweating, short of breath, palpitations, tachycardia, all this crap that you know means cardiac. If your patient is doing that or the patient talks to you and says, look, I've been feeling this way for a couple days now, then we're gonna have to go big guns on them. We're going to have to prepare for a cardioversion. Now, how do we prepare for that? Well, the first nursing action when the doctor or nurse practitioner says, hey, we got a cardioversion, make them NPO because they need a transesophageal echo. Now don't let that bother your jerry curl. A transesophageal echo should not get your drawers in a bunch because all it is is basically like an endoscopy, but it's slipping down this like gadget through your, obviously your esophagus invasively to look at the heart. And you just gotta remember, you've got to check for gag reflex after the procedure before feeding them you've got to remove the dentures before the procedure they absolutely have to be npo and remember they're going to get anesthetic um, spray or whatever on the back of their throat to prepare for this now any endoscopy procedure which is basically what this is abdominal pain or complaints is a big no-no and it is a oh my god it's who you would see first because it probably means there was a perforation of some sort okay now, so finishing up, I've got a couple more things to talk to you about, and then I'm done with you, because like seriously, I gotta get to church. I need Jesus, y'all know that.